Hello my friends. In this video I will explore this very old radio made of Bakelite. Let's find out more about it and also figure out whether it still works. As I can see it is in good condition. All the control knobs are still there and easy to turn. And also the fabric looks like new. I wonder whether this is original, so ask Google. Well, in similar radios the fabric has been mounted vertically, like this, uh, but in my radio it is mounted horizontally. You can see it on the stripes. The original fabrics also have these horizontal orange threads woven into it, mine does not. I guess that the original fabric did not survive World War II or the time after. But this fabric comes close to the original. Leave me a comment down below when I'm wrong. On the left side there are the antenna connectors. Here we have four banana tracks labeled with quartz, which is the German word for short. And there are four tracks um, labeled with long, or lang. maybe a short wave, medium wave, whatever, and long wave, longer wavelengths. Anyway, I think that the user tr must try which one works best for his radio station and antenna. Now to the back side. There are two screws missing. But this is not a big deal. I think I will put in new ones. The important thing is that the back plane is not damaged at all and still in good condition. We see that we have the Volksempfänger VE301 here. Um, a very widespread radio in Germany built from 1933 to 1938. Here's the power switch and the power cord looks rather new. I think uh, that it is not the original or I'm sure it's not the only original. But maybe the plug is original. Uh, it looks very antique, as you can see. Okay, I will open it now and see what is inside there. I just remove the two screws. Okay, all the tubes are complete. It has a very big speaker. Uh, this also looks intact. Nothing damaged, nothing missing. Transformer inside, variable capacitor. Every, everything looks almost new. Also no rust at all, only a little bit of dust. Fine. Now I will check the chassis, but before that I have to take it out. It's fixed with two screws on the button. So one and two, like this. I must also unscrew the control knobs and the speaker. Control knobs first. One, two, and three. Uh, 
And now the speaker, which is fixed with uh, three screws. And now I can easily take it out. There it is. Okay, put it upside down now and uh, see some of the wires are a bit brittle. Uh, I have to replace them for sake of security. But more important is that the wax or tar or whatever there is in the capacitor bank is swollen. I fear that one or some of the capacitors in there are, is worn out and became hot. Uh, maybe an expert for old radios can write into the comments down below what's wrong. I would appreciate your comment. There is also some writing like 11340 on it. Is it a serial number or the date when this radio was made? November 34? Maybe you know. Just tell me what you know. Ok, let us run the ultimative test now. I will not plug it into the mains yet. I have some concerns about security because of the brittle wires and the swollen capacitors. Maybe it will burst into flames or even explode. Ok, just kidding. So I join a power inverter to my bench power supply and turn it on. I can see how much current it draws now. It's about um, 1.3 amps. Uh, the inverter itself needs 300 milliamps, makes 1 amp for the radio. Multiplied by 12 volts, supply voltage makes 12 watt. Uh, that's good. There comes this typical humming and hissing when I turn the control knobs. As a last test, I'm going to measure the resistance between the chassis and the power contacts now. It is infinite in all cases, so I can dare to plug it directly into the wall socket. I replace the brittle wires and put everything together. Now let us try if we can receive any radio station. I joined the leftmost banana jack with approximately 10 meters of wire that serves as antenna and the rightmost with earth. We hear that usual whistling that indicates there is a radio station. This sounds like Italian. Most AM radio stations in Europe have been shut down in the last years, so it is only possible to receive them, if at all, then at night. By the way, during the dark period of history when these radios were common, it was strictly prohibited under severe penalty to do what I do right now. When you hear the whistling, you must turn back the feedback until you can clearly hear the station. There is an English one. Maybe you have noticed that this radio has no line in. 
but it is possible to hear own music through it though. For this, I put together my Arduino AM transmitter on a breadboard. Watch my video where I show how to do that. With an alligator clip wire ascending antenna and another as receiving antenna, I can demonstrate that this radio still can be used. Well, tuning this kind of radios is always a bit fiddly, because you must deal with both frequency and feedback. They also sound like a watering can, but that makes it charm. Okay, hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, share it with your friends, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. So you won't ever miss anything. See you next time. Take care.